Hello, welcome to Hot Issues. One of the most ambitious programs of this government under the leadership of President Kufuado is the Planting for Food and Jobs program, which targeted five key pillars, uh, fertilizers, seeds, uh, marketing, and extension services, among others. Now, it is obvious that this program has achieved tremendous gains uh, from to the extent that the Minister of Agric is confident that we could be banning the importation of rice for local consumption. But those are the good narratives. Beyond that are the key challenges affecting the farmers themselves and what appears to be a glut situation in which we are producing more than we are consuming or producing more than are able to get to the marketplaces. So what are the structural challenges that are making uh, this situation look gloomy for us? I have with me uh, this afternoon the CEO of the National Food Buffer Stock Company, uh, Al-Haji Hanan Abdul Wahab. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks afternoon. very much for your time. I know Thank that there is, there is always something good to say yeah. about the uh, Planting for Food and Jobs program and government touts its achievement in how far this program has ensured that we are nearing food sufficiency. But I want to ask you, the buffer stock what is your capacity to store food in the event that Ghana is in crisis? How long are you able to go? Okay, thank you very much. Um, for the Buffer Store Company Limited, and as, uh, we have identified storage as a major challenge. So prior to the uh, implementation of the planting for food and jobs, we have identified some warehouses which uh, were from the defunct food distribution corporation we did some rehabilitation but that wasn't enough <clears throat> so we brought the argument that look planting for food and jobs very soon will be hit by the dividend uh, what i mean by the dividend is the output especially when we are so you are admitting that output is increasing, is increasing but you don't have the relevant storage facilities to ensure so, that all this good we are making out of the program is being channeled to beneficial use so on the back of that, then government decided to roll up the program of uh, every district to a warehouse. And so far, 80,000 80, number of those warehouses were uh, awarded and there are various stages of completion. Some of them have been completed, I must admit. Some of them are ready for use. They have been handed over to the buffer stock. Uh, How many are ready company. for use? How many are completed? How many are under construction? So, You're saying so 80,000? Did you say 80,000? No, 80 number. Eight. 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 Zero. Eight. Okay. Eight zero. But okay. each one is 1,000 metric tons capacity. So okay. that makes it 80,000 metric tons capacity. Storage. Storage. That's that it. when all is completed is coming to add to the existing uh, 30,000 metric tons capacity that we have as a company. Buffer stock. After we have done the rehabilitation of uh, the defunct food distribution corporation. So, so, so in reality, if I get what you're saying, in reality, government or the program or the buffer stock company has no clue, no idea of how much you can store in the event of crisis because you're saying that the provisions are all in place in the process of completion. Some completed, but you don't know in quantum terms how much we can store. So in like the event I said, we have 35,000 metric tons capacity warehouse now. So we can store a produce to the tune of 35,000 metric tons capacity, which is woefully inadequate. Looking at the outputs that are coming, uh, the bumper harvest and uh, this successful uh, resource of the PFG. Mm -hmm. So on the back of that, we are speeding up with the completion of these warehouses. By the close of the year, uh, we will be uh, commissioning about 40 of the 80 warehouses to add up to our existing capacity of to make it up to 75,000 metric tons. So tell me how crucial mm -hmm. uh, these warehouses and storages are in the scheme of things across the entire value chain of the food production. They are very important because um, that, is, that is the major tool of work of every country that has the food security of the country at heart because food security is the availability of food and how we can stock in anticipation of maybe future use or something, you understand? So it's very, very critical to us. And we are doing this as an immediate way to deal with um, the outputs of the planting for food and jobs. So currently, what we have now is that 
we whatever we buy into our warehouses, they are the same product that we move them out and supply to beneficiary second cycle institutions under the free senior high school program because we are taxed with responsibility to handle the feeding uh, component of the free senior high school. We are going beyond that. 1,000 metric tons, we still believe that look, is something that we want to do as an immediate intervention to support the PFG program. But when you look at the future of the PFG in the near future, three, four years to come, we are going to be doing huge export of our excess. So on the back of that too, we are working on our silos. We have abundant silos under the, uh, the Food Distribution Corporation, uh, which are scattered all over uh, the country. So experts are in, we've taken them around to, to come out with how they can put them into operational. So I'm in, also into operational. very keen, I'm also very keen about accessibility to some of these storage facilities. Most instances, we have uh, these facilities sited at uh, less accessible places, bad road networks, etc. Now, these form the core of the problems the farmers are facing. Mm. They are unable to move their produce to the relevant marketplaces for mm. the, these produce to be purchased and they short change. Some of these go bad on, on their farms. They have inadequate storage problems with the pattern of rainfalls now. There are those who are at risk of not being able to timely harvest their produce and which is at the mercy of, 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 of the weather. So I want to know how accessible are these storage facilities you are talking about okay. to the farmers? Okay, you know, this came and up for their use. This came up when we were uh, uh, committee or meeting to, you know, um, come out with locations of these new warehouses. We, we we took into consideration the existing warehouses that were there for some years now uh, that are not that accessible. So what we did, well, carefully, we, 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 we selected a location where farmers can easily access those warehouses, where government institutions can easily access those warehouses to pick their stocks. So it is something that we have really factored in because we realized that some of the warehouses were left to rot. Um, over, the over the years, I mean, which because, is not a problem of your exactly, government, of our government, say, exactly. but successive over the years, up to the time simply you took because over. simply because of accessibility. But I am thinking that mm. because you had such an ambitious program, yes. these should have formed the core of the program from the very onset. You yes. should have anticipated that. For example, if you were investing in seedlings, investing in fertilizer, you should be able, along the same time, mm. make provisions for expansion mm. yes. of warehouses so that we yes. don't get to yes. the point we are today. No, we we did that. We did that. That, that is how, what gave us even a 35,000 metric tons capacity. When we, when we took over, it was, it was just less than 11,000 metric tons. So we did rehabilitation of the existing warehouses that were defunct of uh, Food Distribution Corporation yeah. in uh, Sunyani, in Wenchi, in um, Tamale, Yendi and other places. We did the rehabilitation to expand this warehouse just to attain the first so part of the 30, planning, the you part of the planning exactly. And you so on the back of that, we said, look, we have to, we have to bring out this program of one district, one warehouse, so that there would be. A I mean, point I find these uh, as political rhetoric. One district, one this, mm -hmm. but the extent of implementation is what. So far, we have done right eighty. Now. It's under construction. It's under construction, and it, it is seven of them have been commissioned. Ajraj, recently, that was the most recent one that his excellency has commissioned. Two number, so that's 2,000 metric tons. We are looking at, when you look at the Ajra area because of uh, the farming activities that is happening there, so the committee recommended that two of those warehouses should be sited there. So we have 2,000 metric tons capacity warehouse in Ajra. Yagba Kobore and uh, uh, Bali and other places have also been commissioned. So the rest of them, like I said, 40 will be ready by the end of the year. And contractors are very, you know, busy working to make sure that we'll get a good number. We projected 40 to be ready. Then the following first quarter of uh, 2020, we'll get the other uh, 
uh, uh, ready. So it means that you're, you're confident that the mechanisms you've put in place will ensure that what's happening now, I mean, when I say what's happening now, I'm making reference to all the concerns that are being raised from some of the rice farmers from, from BC. You were on, on, on that tour. Mm -hmm. Our reporter was, was there too. Mm -hmm. Are you confident that these arrangements in place will ensure that these challenges don't reoccur? Yes, I'm very optimistic about that. And then also we are not just relying on storage. We are also relying on processing. We are relying on processing. So then what, what we are doing now is that for the meantime, we are SAPIP. SAPIP is a project under the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Savannah Agriculture Productivity Improvement uh, Project that uh, uh, is a spe specialized project under the ministry that are supporting farmers. They are also bringing some uh, small meals to be given to, you know, farmers or processors that can process their, their, their meals. But apart from that, government is bringing state-of-the-art meal in Fumbisi area because they have a huge potential. When you look at the valley, I'm sure your reporter has uh, mm. given you the, the, the size of the, of the valley, which more is there to even be developed. Even the ones that are developed are so huge that we, 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 we realize that, look, we have to put a meal there so that we can uh, immediately, right after harvest, we can, we can, we can meal. Because one of the challenges of, 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 of the Ghana rice or the local rice is that usually the period at which after harvesting, that one has to move it to a nearby meal sometimes causes a lot of delay. Mm -hmm. It, it gets dry and for that matter you record high broken percentage when you are milling. So once you have the mill closer to the farms, it's very easy. You can harvest at the right moisture content and uh, you know, mill it, straight mill and attain a lower, lower, lower broken uh, percentage. Either than that, when it's dry, you have no option than to parboil it. Even though some uh, consumers prefer eating the parboil rice, which is more nutritious, mm. but if, when you don't parboil it, when you don't pay all the dry paddy, you record a high broken right, percentage. Right, uh, Alhaji uh, Abdul Wahab, well, we're giving back to you to explore the collaborations between the Buffer Stock Company and school. Welcome back to Hot Issues. I'm Stephen Enti and I have with me uh, the CEO of the National Food Buffer Stock Company, Al Haji Hanan Abdul Wahab. So we heard the farmers. I'm sure you heard them too because you were with them. They're calling for immediate practical measures to ensure that the investments don't go bad. What's the hope for them? Okay, so um, we, as government, uh, we are listening to government. Immediately when the news broke broke, uh, broke out, I have to uh, organize my team and to rush there. We are not there to give blames to anybody. We are there to find an immediate solution on how we can deal with their marketing challenge. Looking at the paddy rice that we have seen around, uh, stocks of them, some of them are, are, are yet to be, to be backed. So immediately what we did was, before we even came there, uh, the DCE had indicated that when your story you know, came out, some other people, it created the awareness of some other people to know that there is something, you know, uh, there, are some, there are there's stocks in the valley, so they are coming down to procure it. We also have more than 1,300 registered lines. So the problem of stocks being in the valley, you're mm. saying, was also because people didn't know stocks existed? No, what, what happened is that over the years... The buyers were not going no, to get them because they over didn't the, know? Over the years, the farmers, they are relying on one major off-taker, and, and that is Avanash. So they were disappointed this year because Avanash said they can't buy. Because of what they bought last year, they still have it in stock. They are not able to uh, you know, sell it off. So and for that matter, there's no point. And this is a marketing buying. challenge, isn't it? If they've purchased and they are unable okay. to sell, so it, is it means that the, the entire program where the Planting for Food and Jobs targeted five pillars, we, including marketing, we, we, you we, shared the marketing we see it. Yeah, we see it. We see it as strange because um, over the years, they have been buying from them. How do they market it? Mm. So what has gone wrong this year? You understand? So over the years, in 2016, they bought from the same farmers. 
In 2017, they bought from them. 2018, they and bought they from them. And they were able to sell. They were able to sell. But perhaps so they we are meeting, too much So we are meeting hand. Avanash okay. so we can seek some, you know, clarity. But before then, we must find a way of taking this burden out from our dear farmers in that area. And how are you doing that? So currently, like I said, licensed buying companies are already in the region, mobilizing trucks to move to the, to the field and then buy their paddy. Licensed suppliers who supply to buffer stock beneficiary schools are also buying paddy, taking it to nearby mills to get the refined uh, 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 Ghana rice and supply to the schools. Because what we are doing is that like, currently all the schools in, in, in Ghana, we supply them with local rice under the Free Senior High School program. And is that the, the, the plan moving forward? I wanted to explore no, we have been this doing much this. later, we have been now doing, that you've brought it up. We out. have been doing this since, 20, since 2017. Since the inception of the program in September, but what's the level of collaboration between uh, the buffer stock company and these schools? Okay, um, at the beginning, you know, we feel some challenges uh, because taste and preference takes time, and we have some of the uh, some of the students who have never tasted local rice in their lives, so we'd have to, you know, get the uh, cooperation of chas to, you know educate the students on the need to eat the Ghana rice. And over the years, 2017, 2018, there was a significant improvement on the acceptability. 2019, fantastic. But is, is, is the acceptability also not based on how it's cooked? I mean, for example, if you cook rice for mm. children, it mm. depends on how you cook it. Mm. It depends on how you make it appealing. They could, they yeah, could accept that is it. That is just one aspect. Also, the quality is also important. And also, uh, acceptability or marketing of this Ghana rice is a shared responsibility to the actors in this in this in this regard. The avanage and other uh, processes also have the responsibility to also market market it and get our local shops around. Uh, we have the malls, the Melcoms, and you know, but, we but, need but, to. But, but the farmers, the local farmers actually are of the view mm. that the, the problem is not only because there is glut or that people are not buying, but they are in competition with continuous imports of rice. I mean, if there are thigh rice and all sorts of mm. rice on the local market, mm. how then can mm. you convince anyone okay. to, so, to, to consume local? So, government has identified this as a challenge. So, what we did is to form a technical committee on rice marketing in Ghana. To recommend banning of rice? Imports. Exactly. So we and have, this is something you subscribe? This, this, this is something we subscribe. And you just, personally and just, yes, believe I, in I, that? I believe in that. Mm. I, I, I believe in that entirely. And just yesterday, we had our third meeting. Yesterday, we have the importers on board. We have the millers and we have the suppliers. So the importers are saying that, look, for them, they don't have any issue. They are willing to take local rice or Ghana rice locally here. And stop the import, provided we can aggregate and get them the best quality. So we are still jawing, you know, to come out with a very uh, beautiful proposal for government to look at it so we can implement it. I like it. your word, beautiful proposal. Yes. It's not always that you get beautiful proposals no. being practical on the ground. So tell me the actual measures you, you are thinking because should be put in place to ensure that if we ban the importation mm. of, of rice, the local rice on our markets will mm. be appealing enough mm. for okay. us to consume. So the strategy is this. We are identifying, we are zoning the country into where they grow rice. rice. First of all, we must have not less than 50,000 metric tons capacity warehouse in that area, apart from the smaller, smaller warehouses, where we can aggregate as government buffer stock, then these importers would come and source it from us and do their onward distribution to the market and to other institutions. So it's beautiful because we have not left anybody out. They are with us. And in fact, the chairman of the committee is an importer that we have made in the chairman of the committee so that he will chair our meetings and whatever we are going to deliberate and come out with a beautiful proposal. We are not just going to do paperwork. We mean business. We are going to make sure that we are going to implement it immediately once the committee's report is out. Government is very ready to implement it. 
because and are there timelines because i'm asking this on the back of the fact that mm. the farmers are impatient mm. they cannot be waiting for their crops to be at the mercy mm. of the world and some going bad and you heard them there they're yeah. selling at buy two get one free and that's a loss yeah. despite the progress that mm. the planting for food and jobs program has made this is uh, this is this is more like a slap in your face we are hoping that next year by this time we should be able to implement this that's very ambitious. That, exactly, because we have no time to... Is it also not because election year is here? You should make beautiful promises in oh, order no. to keep this, yourself this, this is not in about, power. This is not about election promise. This is about, this is about uh, you know, policies and the local economy. Mm. So we are very you know, determined to make sure that we we'll get to where we have set ourselves to be. Because... When you look at it, we we'll still need... And where you have we'll set yourself to be is to, to be independent, independent of rice Exactly. Imports. And then also, you see, when you look at... We have huge virgin arable lands and valleys that have not been developed yet. And the planting for food and jobs in the near future, two, three years to come, this, the, the output is going to be so much that we can do a formal export of our produce even though this time even now we do we are we have some kind of uh, you know collaboration with ECOWAS food security because Ghana now we are keeping food for uh, ECOWAS uh, sub uh, region but Nigeria is not allowing rice imports into their country you're looking at which other countries from the sub region oh, yes. yeah, if you the, ever choose the, to the, um, export you see we have Niger we have uh, Burkina Faso, we have uh, uh, Mali, and other uh, you know, countries. In 2017, we won the bid for storage. We didn't win the bid for uh, purchase. But this time around, we are going to purchase and store on behalf of ECOWAS. So that's also another avenue of creating market for our farmers. It's not just rice, maize, soya bean, and sorghum. Our ultimate aim in all this program is to make sure that the Ghanaian farmers get market. We look out for cost of production, items that comes with cost of production. We look at land, cost of renting of land, cost of land preparation, cost of fertilizer, cost of seed, cost of application of fertilizer, cost of seed, uh, uh, planting, harvesting, Bargain interest on um, on the loan, as the farmer is going in for a loan to, 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 to grow or to farm. Then, lastly, the percentage profit to the farmer. So, based on that, we'll come out with the minimum guarantee price. What it means is that it is a price more than the cost of production of the farmer. It is a price that when the farmer sells at that price, he or she would not lose. But it is an indicator to tell the farmer that don't go below this price. So if there is a buyer that is willing to offer you more than that, fine. But less than that, no. If you're not getting buyers to give you more than that, then government will come in there and buy at the minimum guarantee price. All right, so Alaji, I want to know uh, what the best performing crops are. We've been talking about rice, but mm. under the Planting for Food and Jobs program and under your uh, mandate of mm. storage and distribution, what's the best performing crop? Maize. 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 What about cassava? Uh, you know, cassava... Because demand for cassava is high. It's, it's, the breweries are demanding demand cassava, and we don't have enough for our local okay. food so, consumption, so for example. As part of our mandate, we are positioning ourselves. We are in talks with uh, one district, one factory uh, secretariat. There are some factories that have expressed interest in processing cassava. So we are going to offer our support as aggregators because we have a registered over 1,300 registered licensed buying companies or aggregators. So we have the capacity. So we are taking advantage of that again. So once we are able to, you know, uh, sign an MOU with those companies, then we will aggregate the cassava uh, for them to feed their factories. Right. We are also... In, 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 in discussion with other government agencies like uh, uh, Ghana Police Service, Ghana Prison Service, uh, Ghana Armed Forces, government hospitals, community development schools and the local government, so that buffer stock company or government will supply them with local Ghana-made 
food to their institutions. Alaja, I'm grateful. But prior to mm. the implementation of the free senior high school program, Bezes headmasters are left to buy their food items from the open market. So, but now, government has taken responsibility of that. Free senior high school, we are supplying them what we grow in Ghana. Today, in Ashanti region, even in Laboni Secondary School, I'm very happy that students in Laboni Secondary School eat local rice. Students in Accra Academy, students in Ufansipim, Ufansima, they all eat local or Ghana rice, Ghana meat, Ghana soya bean, and this is Ghana soya, Ghana is millet. Good for the buffer this stock is good company, for the buffer stock right? company. I want, to, I want to wrap up by asking you, I mean, on the scale of 1 to 10, maybe 1 to 10 is too far, on a scale of 1 to 5, how confident are you that over the next three years we could, as a country, successfully ban the importation of rice? You know, um, I'm very optimistic that... Uh, I'm giving you five because I'm very, very optimistic because the Minister for Food and Agriculture is very determined about this, even right uh, in his days of opposition. So today he's sitting on that seat and he's working very hard. He's working very hard. He's putting the structures in place. And, but it has never happened to such a look at the composition of technical team. The importers are willing to support but government. But the minister doesn't believe in buying. It's not that confident that this will No, he is. As of now, he has, he, has, he, has, he has withheld a lot of licenses for importation. He wants to see the clear direction of what they call the committee's recommendation before he will sign any licenses. So today, when you speak to the importers of situation, they will tell you that they have a pile of licenses. The minister has refused to sign. Alaji, for I a very know. good wow. reason. He wants, to, he, wants to, he wants to act based on the recommendation of the technical committee and we are working very hard to come out with a beautiful proposal not just I like on paper your use of the word not, beautiful proposal. not just on paper I like but to implement wow. it on the ground mm. because we are spending so much money in subsidizing seed and fertilizer it should not be in the interest of government to pay a blind eye to the marketing today we have huge uh, local potentials and international potentials so ECOWAS are very willing because we also want to manage our 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 our, our food security reserves as an ECOWAS country, like the World Food Program. And Ghana is playing a very key role in that. So there will be food sufficient and availability. All right, let me just uh, quickly make uh, reference to a quote from the minister and then we'll wrap up on that. The minister says he does not believe in banning any product. Mm. He's an economist mm. and does not see the need for banning anything, comparing that to Nigeria closing their borders. Okay, so what the minister is trying to say is that Nigeria closing their border will not solve that problem because you must be self-sufficient before you close your borders. You must be self-sufficient before you close your borders. Ghana will not be in the history of our borders when our farmers, when we don't have many state-of-the-art rice mills that can bring out quality rice that can compete with that of the imported one. Other than what, Ghanaians would come out and then challenge us. You are giving us local rice with stones. You are giving us local rice with mixtures of varieties, different colors in the same bag. No, that is not where we are going. We want to make sure that the time that we are going to close our borders, we are self-sufficient to deal. It's not just about production for this year. It should be continuous. We must have policies that would continue, that would, would enable us to continue the production forever. Forever, Abdul. To sustain, Abdul. To sustain, to sustain the, the demand of the, look, of, of the Ghana rice or rice in Ghana. Alaji Abdul Wahab, I'm grateful that you Thank could you make much. it. Thank you Thank very you much. much. I've been having a great conversation with Alhaji Hanan Abdul Wahab, who is the CEO of the uh, National Food and Buffer Stock Company. I'm Stephen Etienne, and this has been Hot Issues.